Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. It says, After this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, and kindreds, and people, and tongues, stood before the throne, and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. And cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. Call them like Yahweh Bashmel Shai, Wahawah Kakudash, double honors to the whole like elder apostles, saved to be saved. Lord, want to start with those at the GMS church, and shalom to the rest that may be out here under the same doctrine. Onward to the brothers here. In the order, the men here in the order, giving all diligence and all true faith and sincerity, teaching his truth. Over to the rest of you, Akim, doing likewise. And on this faith of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai, from your other Akim on down to the younger Akim. Okay, teaching. Uh, to the rest of you believers, you know, Shalom to you as well. Um, that's also in on this faith of the Israelite race, you women and children, and the men. Okay. Ultimately, though, the elect, those that's of us that are about to go on to be found, to possibly have been of the house of David. So, can thou speak, speak Greek is what I'm going to title this. We're going to actually read this in Acts 21 and 37. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, may I speak unto thee? May I speak unto thee? Who said, can thou speak Greek? Okay. And in the NLT, as, and as, as Paul was about to be taken inside, he said to the commanders, may I have a word with you? Do you know Greek? Is what he said. Do you know Greek? The commander asked, surprised. So this is what, this is going to be a series, which I'm going to be going into uh, different words in the Greek and the reason being because Paul he was a Hebrew Israelite let me grab that real quick Philippians I'm going to jump to 5 and I'm going to probably jump back up to 1 circumcised the 8th day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin and Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law a Pharisee yeah and I'm going to read that in the NLT. I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I am a pure blood, blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew. See, a real Hebrew, if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. And when you jump up to the NLT, so Paul, just to prove that point, he was a complete Hebrew. You know, he's a Hebrew Israelite, specifically of the tribe of Benjamin. Okay, in verse 1, he says, finally, my brethren. So he's talking to other Israelites, according to Romans 9, the ninth chapter. It says uh, that because that's who the brethren are. All right. And the law tells you who the brethren are, are according to Leviticus, the 19th chapter and the, the 16th verse on down. I believe that is. It says, Finally, me, finally, my brethren who are Israelites rejoice in the Lord to write the same things, to write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you, it is safe. So he was writing to, you know, the brothers and the sisters. When you read the NLT, it tells you that whatsoever. Whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. I never get tired of telling you these things, I, and I do it to, to safeguard your faith. But yeah, so when you go back to Acts 21, he was asked, do he know Greek? He was a complete Hebrew Israelite. Now, simply, the reason why I'm doing this, 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 uh, um, this series, pretty much, which I'll be going into the Greek words, because 
our people in past time, we spoke Greek. And Paul, being a Hebrew, he spoke Greek. He will write letters. And being that, be, uh, and, and that being the case, he will uh, write, while he will write letters, they wouldn't only be in his native tongue being Hebrew, but they will also be in Greek, which is why he spoke Greek. Specifically, the reason he spoke Greek is because he had other Israelites that wasn't born on the native tongue, so they spoke he they spoke Greek. You know, he had he had other Hebrew Israelites. He was that's who he was a teacher to. So that's why Paul spoke Greek, and he was a citizen of uh, Rome, okay, of Rome, Italy. But more so, the reason he was put given that lot is because why he would be come the uh, teacher of the Gentiles because Paul could condescend, Paul could speak different languages, you know? And our people could sp would end up speaking a different language due to the curses, the scattering, simply. So since we spoke, one, since Paul, a lot of his writings uh, were not, only be in Hebrew, but they would be in Greek as well. It's really, particularly the ones that's in the Bible. That's uh, not to sound deep. I'm just saying you, you just got to know that Paul was writing Hebrew too. But all the letters in the Bible is in Greek. Okay, as far as what people hold, what people have, you know, these translations or whatever they was translated from the the writings in the Greek. But nonetheless, Paul spoke Greek, so. We need to be able to speak Greek and understand Greek to be able to understand Paul, where Paul was coming from, because he was spoke, speaking to people who spoke Greek and Paul and not only Paul, but all of our people, not all of our people, but our people in general, the Hebrew Israelites, our forefathers, our ancestors of us so-called black Latinos and Native American Indians, they spoke Greek and we are our ancestors. So we spoke Greek in, in times past and approved it. Acts, this is St. John 19, and I'm going to start at verse, uh, I'm going to start at 20. Th this title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Yahweh Shai was crucified was nigh to the city. And it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. See that? Listen, verse 20. This title then read many of the Jews. So this is regarding when the Jews was reading and it says for the place where Yahweh Shai was crucified was nigh to the city and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Jews. It's like it, I said in Jews and Latin. And this is what the Jews, you know, currently were uh, sitting there reading. Now, were they literally, literally reading it? Yes. It says what? When you go on. Uh, um. And the NLT, it tells you, it says the place where Yahweh Shai was crucified was near the city and the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin and Greek so that many people could read it. But the context they removed, which is how the Jews was reading it, you know, the Jews are sitting there reading this right now and they reading it in what Hebrew, Greek being a point and Latin. OK, so. It went on to say in the NLT was a good part point. It says so that many could read it. Why? So because many, many of the Jews spoke different languages. Many of the Jews that even knew they was Jews spoke spoke these languages. Cause all the Hellenizing that took place in it, in it to prove it, I'm gonna read read on in the NLT. It says, then the leading priests, which is the Jews, those that know they was Jews, objected and said to Pilate, who wrote this. Change it from the king of the Jews to he said, I am king of the Jews. See that Pilate replied, no, I have what I have written. I have written. So they could. How would they be able to tell him to change it? If they couldn't understand what he wrote. And these was men who knew they was Israelites, Jews. See that? And you read it in the KJV. It tell you the same thing. Verse 21. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. 
pilot answer what I have written, I have written. So that's simple. It's just that simple. Okay, they understood what he could, what pilot wrote, jumping up to 19, and pilot wrote a title in the KJV and put it on the cross. And the writing of, and the writing was Yahweh Shai Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Okay, and this title then read many of the Jews. For the place where Yahweh Shai was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Yeah, and you got to read that in an NLT to really see it. It says the place, verse 20, the place where Yahweh Shai was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek, so that many people could read it. And the people that was uh, reading it at this point was who? The, the Jews, the, the, the Israelites. So proving that they all, what? That our people spoke Greek, man. So you got to know how to speak Greek because a lot of the people try to go into what was going on then which was a lot of writings concerning who the Lord coming back for, who the Lord going to save, what the scripture is talking about. But in order to get that right, you have to what? Be able to speak Greek, man. And that's pretty much my, my uh, uh, point of, of, of this. Now, as you see, I, I read Revelation 7 and 9, which is what I'm going to be going into this word nations, which came off, uh, you could say a land back off a video. Just, I'm going to just get it off this video that, you know, my beloved brother, he did, you know, one of the younger brothers, he, he did, which he didn't go into it wrong at all. He was going into the great multitude, okay? He was going into the, the great multitude, uh, Revelation 7, 7 and 9, and he, he, brought, he went into it correctly, you know what I'm saying? But it was a part where he went into the, the, the word nations. <clears throat> and, um, you can't, I can't really intentionally tell if he tried to go into it like that, but nonetheless, he still went on to prove who did that, did, who this was actually talking about. Okay, and that word "nations" is the same. Uh, is the word is the same word that I'll be addressing that he addressed. Okay, so as you can see, when we go back here, the header is all of all the na other nations and an, an innumerable multitude would stand before the throne clad in white robes and, and palms in their hand. So like I said, he explained it right. He went into it right. I'm just going to do this. Okay. Can thou speak Greek? Okay. So when you go into that word um, nation, nations, the words you're going to get is ethnos. Right. And how you go about this is, right, you know, for those that may not know, if he didn't, because it give you a lot of it give you a lot of meanings here. But the first of all, the meaning you always use is the meaning that goes with the context, because they're gonna give you a bunch of different meanings, and you got words that just work that can mean that could be used in different ways. So you will use the meaning that goes within with the with the the the, the context with the the continuity of you know, the Lord's objectives, his agenda. He can't, everything should go in a straight stream, like what, what the Lord say he's going to do, what he always said he was going to do and wouldn't do. Should nothing come up within the doctrine like a mistake, like, oh, he reneged. No, it shouldn't come up like that. If it come up to you like that, that means you misunderstanding something incorrectly because the Lord, he doesn't change. He's not the son of man that he shall lie, nor repent, man. You know what I'm saying? Like he say what he say. If you if you end up taking it the wrong way, you know that's 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 a personal problem. You know, you that you, that's you earn not knowing the scriptures. And in this particular regard, sometimes because really that's what it come down to. But what can give you a deeper understanding, which you might be lacking on, or even might be going going into, but going about the wrong way, or misinterpreting, is what the the Greek. In the New Testament and in the Old Testament, obviously the Hebrew, but really the Greek in this instance, you know what I'm saying? So you earn not understanding, you know, th this, okay?
that's how you would go about it. For instance, they give you a lot of words for the uh, word ecclesia or ecclesia, okay, which is the Greek word for church in the Hebrew, in the Greek, uh, in the New Testament, okay, in the, in the, in the Greek. And, it, you know, but you would use the one that always goes simply, which is the gathering of the Israelites. You know, that's the easiest one. But anyway, you get this word ethnos for nations, because people think that this, the word, this, 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 this uh, verse is talking about them as far as the other nations, but it's not. So look at everything it gives you. It gives you what? A multitude, whether of men or of beasts associated. We're just going to jump straight to the point. Verse two. A multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus. And genus is going into what? Your race. You see? So it couldn't be talking about everybody on the face of the earth. Just off of that. So ethnos is perfect. You just got to not, you got to go into it the right way. You know, deal, dealing with that word ethnos, which we're going to get another instance outside of the this this app. Okay. Which is, you know, is the same. Uh, what's it called? Is the uh, the uh, uh, the blue letter? But they be playing with things in the blue letter. But <clears throat> anyway, it says a multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus, right? And then you jump down three. It says a tribe. A. The key thing you want to highlight here is what a a. Not all tribes. You got 18 tribes of the world, of the earth, on the earth. 18 tribes. Okay? If you will, right? Races. Or you could say nation. 18 nations. See that? And hence, first key word is what? A. So a tribe. A nation. A people group. You know, it's like when you're addressing a couple, they got the same last name. You ain't got to say Jennifer, uh, Mr. Uh, Robert, if his name Robert Watson and they're married, her name's and her name's Jennifer, you ain't got to say Mr. Robert Watson and Jennifer Watson. People, you will hear people go like, and Mr. Robert Wa and Mr. Robert and Jennifer, Jennifer Watson. See that? Like the comma. So what? Everything that's after the beginning part is just it, it's a continuation of the beginning part. So a tribe. So that's just one. So when they say nation, that's just one nation. And nation goes into what? Race. Okay, let's get that. Nation. A large body of people united by common descent. And when you go into it even further, it says what? Race. See? Not a race like the Indy 5. Like, see, not that race. Get to the, 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 the truth of the matter. See? Each of the major groupings into which humankind is considered to be divided. See? On the basis of physical characteristics or shared at, at, ancestry. Similar word, what? Ethnic group. So race is ethnic group. And nation in Greek is ethnos. So that's saying race. See that? It's just a race. People. A group of people sharing the same culture, history, language. Okay, that's it's just that simple. Okay, and then it can sometimes mean these things in the OT. Foreign nations, not right, but we're not in the OT, so that'll be Hebrew. See that? So that's completely that's off. It says worshiping the true God, not worshiping the true God. Pagans, Gentiles. Paul uses the term for Gentile Christians. Yeah, and those Christians are uh, the, 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 the Israelites that followed the Messiah, the so-called Christ. Okay? And how do we know that? Because no one can follow him that he didn't come and reveal himself to, you know, or talk to. They couldn't follow him. You know? 
he only came he only came to talk to them and when you go to the point where uh in the scriptures when paul he was uh in court and he was talking to Pilate, i believe that was um and he told him he was like you almost convinced me to be a christian you see what i'm saying but the reason why he wasn't a christian because this the the the, the ministry of uh, uh, so-called christianity never came to the other people that's because the disciples the people that had the word that could deliver it to you wasn't sent they wasn't allowed to go to nobody else the messiah himself the so-called christ himself commanded them to, to go into the into the cities of the samaritans or the gentiles into ye not but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of israel so paul was a disciple so when paul says he's a a teacher of the gentiles a preacher of the gentiles etc those that's those was those was the uh hebrew israelites that became like the gentiles completely so that's what that means so really you can't be you, you a christian by birth you see what i'm saying you can only be a christian by birth on this side period no one else can be a christian if you're not an israelite and this scriptures that actually tell you that you know i'm gonna do a lesson on that lord will okay and then when you go down to the strong's definition it tell you matter of fact you know what never mind i was gonna get it but you can look that up paul he's like you almost convinced me to be a christian man i was gonna get it but i ain't here for that can thou speak greek man that's what we're here for when you're addressing this word ethnos so what a race a race what race? The Israelite race. See that? A race. So ethnos is the perfect word right here. It's just understanding it like that. So it's not talking about everybody. Is everybody on the earth the same race? So that's a cut when you read Revelation 7 and 9. You see what I'm saying? Because you will hear nations, but when you go into the word nations, it's ethnos. And what does it mean? A race. So how could that encompass everybody? They bust your bubble. Because if you're reading it in Greek and not English, it's going to say ethnos right there. And you're going to be like, what's ethnos? It's going to be like a race. You see, that is a tribe, etc. And this another part right here. It says specifically a foreign non-Jewish one. In parentheses, this is this what you really, you want this. You want this. You want to meet this head on. Usually by implication pagan see usually usually means what under normal conditions see but the lord deals with what mysteries you see that the lord is not he's not normal okay the lord is not normal matter of fact let's get that word normal real quick yeah standard typical ordinary the Lord is not average, look, average, mainstream, simple. See? All ye fools, all, how long will ye love simplicity? The Lord is not, he's unusual, he's abnormal. Okay? Those are antonyms to the word uh, usual. Okay? He's, look, uncommon. The Lord is holy. See that? Uncommon. You know, the Lord is not, <laughs> it's so, it's a little rare, a little alien, you know, like they say the Lord work in mysterious ways. That goes, alien takes you into what? Look, mysterious. Oh, also, uh, 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 surprising does, uncommon. The opposite of uh, uh, uncommon is what? Okay. So yeah, you go into it, it's obviously, you know, uh, holy, you know, okay, uh, strange, not saying we're here to go into all this, but you can see it, you look, strange gives you what, mystifying, see, the Lord deals, these, that's why the, the, the you know, you got the mysteries of the Gentiles, man, look, mysterious, See, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them, it is not given. Paul talked about the mystery of the Gentiles, man. Okay, 
the secrets, the hidden. Okay, that's how the Lord moves, man. Okay. So yeah. So it say usually, right? Usually is 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 now simply when you go into usually, habitually, customarily, typically, ordinarily, obviously we went into commonly, um, mainly, more often than not. So really it means not always. You see? It it means it really it means not always. It's not always that. See that? So usually by implication, pagan. So ethnos mean usually, meaning not always by implication, pagan. Pagan. You know, so it's a word that could sometimes be talking about the actual Gentiles, heathens, but not all the time. It's a word that's not all the time talking about actual Gentiles. <laughs> so it's just that simple. Okay, so that's basically it. Now, when you go into ethnos, meaning, it says what? It's ethnos, a Greek word. It literally says what? The dictionary.com. The Greek word soul rendered is ethos, which means a multitude or a nation. We went into nation. Nation means what? Race. Okay, and it says what? The lost 10 tribes. See that? Ethnos, people of the same race, nationality, or who same share a distinctive culture. Yeah, two, three, two or three uh, witnesses, as the brother said. Okay. Um, yeah, may refer to ethnic group, which is what a race. Ethnic group, not ethnos. Don't mean ethnic groups. It mean ethnic group. See, a population of ethos, lexico.com, a population group regarded as having a population group, not groups, regarded as having a common descent or having a common national or co cultural tradition. They all Israelites. OK, so that's what uh, uh, the word ethnos, when you just go further into it, it, it means it give you that word genus again. Of the same nature of genus. Genus means what? Okay. A class of things that have common characteristics and that can be divided into subordinate kinds. Okay. But simply. Yeah. A class. A category. Let's get. Let's go further into it because I'm sure there's another one. Look. Race. Genesis. Genesis go into race. Okay. Birth, race, stock. And this is that simple. Okay. Now what I want to do, I'm going to end here, Revelation 7 and 9. When you read this in the Amplified Bible version, okay, translation, the same verse. It says, what? After these things I looked, and this is what I saw. A vast multitude, which we know, it was a race, which no one could count, gathered from every nation. And from all the tribes and peoples and languages of the earth, like the Lord say he's going to do, he's going to gather his elect. That's not in any of these other translations, you know, so that's the cut. It says standing before the throne before the lamb, Hamashiach, dressed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. Yeah. Um. Now, the reason why that's put there, because really, when you read it in the KJV, that's the context. You know, it's talking about it really because really it's really saying is it's, it's gathering, get, getting these people from amongst all these people in all these places. But they just put nations, you know, when it should really be the nations should really go into places as well. You see, what I'm saying it shouldn't just be like race, because that's why you got kindreds and people, people, you know. Period. That's already implying that. So, you know, that's just that. So, yeah, call Halam La, Yahweh Bash, Meow Shai, Wahawa Kaku, Kudash. You know, that's what ethnos, you know, goes into. That's how you deal with the word ethnos. You know, it's a word that don't always mean actual 
heathens, man. Shalom.